What's up everybody? This one is going to be similar to a video I've uploaded recently, which is why you should take first player seriously if you're a CN solver. That was just kind of like an interesting mindset uh, way of thinking about it, rather than being like super duper intellectual. It was just kind of a way to like rile up CN solvers, you know, who are being a bit lazy, because in my opinion, if you're CN and you're not planning first player, like, you're basically just like a worse version of a person who solves on dual cross. Or even single cross in some cases, just because of recognition. Uh, go check out that video for more info on it. But basically, this is going to be a rationale as to why you should take first pair seriously, regardless of whether or not you are CN or not. Obviously, it's a lot harder if you only do one cross, but I think it is possible. Um, it, maybe not every single solve, because if you're just on solving on one cross, like some cross cases can get really tricky, um, and you can get kind of fucked over by pair options, but. It's still worth working towards, and I want to really explain why. And the idea kind of stems from the idea that as you progress through F2L, your look ahead will get progressively easier and easier. I also talked about this a bit in a video I filmed on F2L rotational efficiency. Uh, just so you know, I am like filming a lot of these in advance, so I may not have uploaded that yet, but if I have uploaded the video on rotational efficiency, definitely check it out. Um, but yeah, basically the idea is when you have zero pair solved, your look ahead will be the hardest. I'll just, I'll just solve across to better illustrate my point. So here we have, um, and, we'll, and we'll get rid of this as well, just to make things fun. Um, when you have nothing solved, you have a lot of blind spots for where F2L pieces could be stuck. So, I don't know, let's say you see this corner here. The edge could be here, or it could be there, or it could be there, or it could be back there. And guess what? It's back there. Um... And then once you've solved one pair, so let's say this one, that's one less blind spot effectively. So for your next pair, maybe you see this. The edge could be stuck here. In this case, it's not. It could also be stuck there, but it's not going to be stuck over here. And in this case, it's just up here. So you just do that. And then for your third pair, there's going to be nothing in your uh, blind spots here, although these aren't really great blind spots for a variety dominant solver. Um, I also talk about in the rotational efficiency video, but... Let's pretend we're over here, like we've rotated smart, so we're either in this position or this position. Now that we have two pairs solved, look ahead gets a lot easier, and I'm of the belief that if you've rotated intelligently, and the pairs that you've filled are adjacent, which happens more often than not, you really shouldn't be pausing between pairs three and four. So that's kind of the whole idea, is basically as you progress through F2L, your look ahead will get easier and easier. So I think I think it's pretty obvious why this ties into planning first pair, but I really want to really want to drive this home from the perspective of doing your best possible look ahead. So let's say you are of the skill level where you can plan cross plus one so well that you know you have 15 seconds of inspection, you look at the cube, and you're confident that you could just close your eyes and just let muscle memory do the work. That is amazing because then that's all those mental resources that would otherwise get spent on looking at what you're solving that could be looking for the second pair. And that's where the like, real golden key is. That's like, that's like getting close to like, you know, the pinnacle of some very high-level CFOP solving, or at least setting yourself up to be successful in high-level CFOP solving. Because if you can solve cross plus one with amazing look ahead going into the second pair, ideally you probably won't pause that much, if at all, for the second pair. And then on top of that, if you've rotated intelligently, guess what? Like I said before, if you've rotated intelligently and you happen to get adjacent pairs filled, which happens more often than not, realistically, you really shouldn't be pausing much, if at all, between the last two pairs. So, think of it like this. If you can plan cross plus one real good, real, real good, and you can look ahead to second pair, and, you know, enough of the stars align, you're basically setting yourself up for a, you know, a situation where the vast majority of your solves you're not going to be pausing, period. If you put in the work to have efficient F12 solutions, um, such that, you know, you're able to properly implement Look Ahead, go look at my video on why 99% of Look Ahead videos suck, as opposed to that one, which is good. Um, if you've built up to that level, and then you've also learned how to inspect cross plus one on top of that, you can, you can have, like, pauseless solves, like, most of the time, for F12 at least. And if you can do that with, like, decent TPS, like, I would be very surprised if your F2L wasn't sub-5 on average. And if you can do that 
all you need with sub 5 f 2 is like 3.5 last layer, which is not that difficult, and you're now a sub 8 solver. Sub 8. <laughs> you don't even need COLL or OLCP, just good OLLs and PLLs with that level of look ahead and good enough TPS and all the look ahead stuff that I talked about, and you're probably sub 8 by that point. Please, for the love of God, don't be lazy with planning first pair. Like, I, I can't stress enough, like, just how important it is. Like, it really, like, the conventional wisdom has always been, oh, it sets the tone for the solve, which isn't very helpful advice, but it's largely true. If you do first pair well and, you know, in a structured manner like I've just, you know, described, it really does set the tone for the whole solve. And there's a very good chance you can have a pauseless F2L doing that. And, again, like, I, I would be very surprised if implementing this kind of advice didn't get you sub-8. Just straight up. So, that's pretty much all I got for this one. Um, let me know what you think. Please take first pair seriously, people. Whether you're color neutral or not, I, I promise it's very, very, very worthwhile. Thanks for watching.